Hi friends, welcome to project time. In this video, I want to introduce this temperature and humidity control circuit. So this is the main board and this is the panel board. If you want to build this project successfully, please watch the video from the start to the end and don't miss any part. Otherwise, you might face some problem, some problems in building this circuit. Uh, let me show you the screen closely. The left side is the temperature and the right side is the humidity temperature is above normal but not that much high so the color is yellow but the humidity is lower than normal so the color is red and these two are the maximum and minimum recorded time of the temperature and humidity and this is the clock let's go to the next screen and here you can adjust the clock and here you can adjust the activation time activation based on the temperature so uh, this is out one means relay one and out two means relay two okay i will explain all of this in the last section just a brief introduction to the menus uh, in the next step i will explain the hardware and after that i will go through the schematic and pcb and then i will explain all of these menus and how you can adjust the out one and out two so stay tuned all right as i had promised in this section i will explain the hardware first let me show you the bare pcb boards this is the main board and this is the panel board bottom side i designed the pcb schematic and pcb using Altium Designer and I had sent the Gerbers to PCB Way, and this is the results and I can say the quality is just perfect let me show you something before I go to the assembled board do you see these board cutout or, and creepage areas my assumption was that you might use these relays to control some AC loads for example an AC fan or an AC heating element so these uh, board cutout areas or creepage areas are quite important to follow the electrical safety rules and standards so just don't forget about that let me show you the main board uh, here i think the solder mask mask does not reflect the light yes okay the, here is the input voltage for the regulator and the board and uh, this is the first prototype in the latest revision of the board which is available for you I have replaced these two regulator regulators with a D-pack 5 volts regulator so uh, be careful about that nothing has changed but that D-pack type is better than these two especially you don't need any heat sink anymore so these relays will control the heating and cooling elements or devices this one for the cooling and this one for the heating because this relay will be activated when the temperature is higher than something that you define and this one in reverse in reverse it will be activated when the temperature is lower than your defined temperature so this one is for the heating element this connector is for the uh, temperature and humidity sensor the sensor is or the module sensor is SHT uh, SHT3 this one it is a module you can find find that pretty easy just if you need more information just check the article for that sensor this is the famous Raspberry Pi board uh, this microcontroller is RP24D the flash memory of this board is 2 megabytes the default flash memory flash chip and this is the 40 pins FPC connector be careful with soldering this component if you have if you don't have experiment just practice a few one before before you damage your board or the connector because actually it is a micro soldering 
This one is the panel board. You can see three tactile push buttons to make your adjustment up, down and switch. And this is the back side of the panel board. You can see the connectors and the flat cable or the FFC cable. Okay, and this is the uh, uh, LCD cable. The LCD is 2.4 inch TFT display and the driver chip is ELI. 9341 okay uh, one thing before i go to the next step and explain the schematic and pcb is this ffc or the flat cable this is not a one-to-one -one or direct flat cable it is called a reverse cable or let me explain because sometimes it's called differently the cable is this one so one side is like this and one side is like this so one side is connected from, from the bottom and one side is connected from the top. Okay, so this is called a reverse cable in some references. Anyway, uh, let's go to the schematic and PCB. All right, in this section, I will talk about the schematic and PCB and this is the Altium Designer environment. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, there is a link in the YouTube video description that allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. So just follow that link and I have bookmarked some of these tutorials because they are quite useful. I will check later on. This is the schematic and this is the PCB layout of the main board and this schematic and this PCB layout are related to the panel board. As you know, with each project, I also publish an article and explain everything. So I just uh, skip the schematic for now and I will go to the PCB. Before that, let me show you an interesting website called Octopart and it's actually a, a search engine for the electronic components. Let me show you by one example. This relay is LM1 5D. This is the Octopart website, LM1 5D. Just look at the speed. Enter. Do you see that? Blink of eye, even I can say faster than Google. It clearly shows that they have hosted this website on an expensive cloud servers. So it shows some basic information and the pricing. Let me click on this and go to the manufacturer website. Do you see the speed difference? This is, an, this is an ordinary website and that was the Octopart. So it says it's a 5 volts relay, 12 amps. And this is the current consumption of the coil. Okay. And another nice feature of this website is the BOM tool or Bill of Materials tool. So and, uh, all of these features and services are free. So I highly recommend you to sign up for the website and check all of them yourself. Let's go to the PCB. Okay, this is the latest revision of the PCB board. The version is 1.2. If you remember, I told you that I have replaced the regulators and you will use these two DPAC regulators instead in this revision or the latest revision of the PCB board. These two are better, especially you don't need any heatsink and etc. Another change is that I have enlarged the pad size of this FPC connector because this decision makes the soldering job easier. Uh, in the previous revision, the pads were shorter and the soldering job was harder especially if you don't have experience. Let me show you in 3D. Do you see that? This space makes the soldering job easier. Another point is that you have to be careful that you use some female pen, pin headers for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Because why? Do you see this regulator? There is one 3.3 regulators just on the back side of the Pico board. I mean, uh, you have to make some distance between the Raspberry Pi and the board to 
avoid any short circuit between the regulator and the board. So just use some uh, female, female pin headers and solder the pin headers uh, on the pins and mount your Raspberry Pi on the pin headers. Uh, in the 3D layout, the pin headers are missing. Let's go to the back side. So do you see the isolation gap or the creepage areas? Uh, as I told you, these are quite important to follow the electric car safety rules. So nothing special remains here. Let's go to the panel board. And this is the panel board. The 3D view is better. You see the push buttons? Let's go to the back side. And we have two uh, FPC uh, connectors here also. So you have another difficult job in soldering here also. However, as I said, I have enlarged the pads to make the soldering job easier. So you shouldn't have any problem. Really, the 3D view of the Altium helps a lot to explain everything and you will pass the flat cable of the LCD through this gap, okay? So you will pass from here and you will connect the uh, flat cable to this FPC connector. That's it. Very simple. So let's go to the final step and I will show you how you can adjust your board and play with the graphical user interface. All right, welcome to the last step. Now I wanna show you how you can adjust the settings. Let me turn on the device. This is the welcome message. And this is the main screen. As you know, the left side is the temperature and the right side is the humidity. The first thing I'm gonna do is to adjust the clock and time. So let's go to the next screen. This is hour and the time here is five. 15 p.m. So it should be 17 because this is a 24 hours format. So it should be 17, 15. That's it, 5, 15 p.m. Let's go to the next menu. So it clearly says activate out one or it means relay one if the temperature is higher than Let's say 35. I will test this using a hot air station and I will, I will show you how this thing works and what this box means. Uh, without this box, if the temperature goes higher than uh, 35, then the relay one would be, act, would be turned on. Okay, would be the device will turn, uh, will turn on the relay one. However, the temperature might fluctuate around this number and that causes problem for your cooling system and, and it continuously turns on and off your cooling device which could be fan or it could be a compressor or whatever and it definitely might damage that device. So I have implemented, implemented something like a tolerance. So when I put the tolerance on one, it is up to five, okay? When I put this on one, when the temperature goes higher than 35, the relay one is uh, on. However, the relay only gets off when the temperature drops below 34, not 35. So difference of this uh, would be considered to turn off the relay. So this uh, prevents or avoids uh, fluctuation around a number. So I have implemented this myself. If you don't like it, just put zero. I like that uh, idea and I put one. And for out two or relay two, just in reverse. When the temperature is lower than something, the relay two will activate a heating element to warm up the environment. And for this one, I also prefer one. As I said, you can go up to five or even if you don't like it, just leave it as zero and come back. So let me show you 
uh, the one of the tests if you remember 35 should be relay on relay one on and 34 should uh, turn off the relay so let's be this is the other station and there we go 35 the relay is on and you can see the red LED here there we go the relay is on and we will wait up to 34 if the relay is off Thirty-five. Okay, just a little bit. Got it? Very nice. So it prevents any fluctuation around uh, 35 degrees. So that was a test and I cannot test the cooling uh, because I, can't, I don't have something to cool down the uh, sensor. However, let me show you the humidity increase. If I cover this sensor with my hand, I realize that the humidity increases. See here. Got it? So blue means the weather is quite wet so because it was simulation it uh, quickly comes back to the real live humidity so anyway i think it's a very nice uh, project for your everyday electronic and everyday life to control the temperature of the room workplace and whatever uh, don't forget to share and sub subscribe See you in the next video.